Well, hello and welcome to the live update for today, Friday, June 10th. Coming at you at the end of the week instead of the beginning, try to throw a little curveball. Uh, I'm here with the one, the only Steve Delinsky of Chicago. I'm just going to say Chicago Pizza Friday. <laughs> I love it. I'm just going to say Steve of Chicago because he's got a, um, a list of credentials as long as my arm. That's well, that's the short arm. He's got as long as the long arm. So, Steve, I guess, and yes, I do sir. apologize, everybody, if it's a little choppy and slow. As long as you can hear and see Steve, that's the important part. If not, just bear with us. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce the guest, our guest, Steve Delinsky. Uh, Steve, why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, who you are and what you do, man? Yeah, well, thanks for that great intro, Brian. Um, I'm a food reporter based in Chicago. I've been in Chicago, gosh, almost 30 years. And I started at uh, the Tribune Company as a news reporter, shifted into food in 95 on the Good Eating Show, uh, which was a TV version of the Tribune's weekly food section. And that's really where I kind of got my MBA in food and, and understanding food and learning about food. Um, you know, Chicago is a great food town, right? We have a lot more than pizza. And I did that for about eight years. And then I went over to ABC7 in Chicago about 2003. And I was there for 17 years as the food reporter. Mm. It was called The Hungry Hound. And then I just went over to NBC about a year ago. But the pizza thing began about five years ago for me. I, you know, I was getting so tired of people just misinterpreting or just kind of propagating <laughs> myths about pizza in Chicago. The John Stewart rant, of course. Um, you know, I'm, a <laughs> yeah. proud, I'm a proud Chicagoan. And, and I agree with a lot of people who say that stuffed pizza is a casserole, but stuffed is a subcategory of deep, of, of deep dish. And so a lot of people don't realize that there's these you know, deep and there's taffron and there's stuffed. And when you say Chicago style, it really gets under my skin when they just say casserole. So, and that's just an uneducated comment. And so I felt I took it upon myself as a food reporter just to get to the bottom of it once and for all. So about five years ago, I created this Chicago pizza crawl and I just documented it on my website, my personal website. And I went to about 80 places in the city and suburbs, you know, three or four places a day, a couple of bites each, uh, taking copious notes and really realizing right. that there's a lot more than just one style of pizza here. There's tavern, there's deep, there's Neapolitan, there's Roman, there's Sicilian artisan, there's a lot of pizza here. Uh, but the pizzas that people people think about in Chicago are all downtown. They're all six blocks within every hotel. And so that's where <laughs> everybody goes when they come to Chicago and they don't go to the neighborhoods. I mean, you look at, you have 77 neighborhoods in my city that I proudly hang in my office here. Um, and so it's, you know, get out of the, your comfort zone, go to the South side, go to the West side, go to the Northwest side. And so that's really what I've been kind of focused on. So, you know, the, the first book, Pizza City USA was about 101 places in the city and suburbs. And then I started doing a podcast called Pizza City every other Friday. Yep, there's the book. And then um, this, through the, through the pandemic, I was like, there's all these other pizza places that are opening up. And it's like, we got to do something besides, you know, we got to update that first book, first of all, because places have closed. But we also need to talk yeah. about this third wave of pizza that had happened here in Chicago. Like, you know, the artisan guys, the chefs who quit their jobs and opened up pizzerias. So that's where we got into the ultimate Chicago pizza guide, which just came out a couple of months ago. And that's really been what I've been pushing the last few months. And then about six, eight months ago, we said we should do a festival. We really, New York City's got a festival, 18 and 19, they did a festival in the Bronx. You know, we could do that too. Pizza Master Ovens are based here. They're big offices in the suburbs. So mm -hmm. they were kind enough to give me 10 Pizza Master Ovens. And we're gonna do this blowout pizza fest this summer, um, about a month from now at the end of July. All right, well, I'll tell you what, you kind of touched on every single thing we're gonna talk about here just briefly. So I wanna just jump backwards and, and kind of flesh out some of those details so first off i'm gonna go and i, I do want to get to the chicago um pizza fest uh city pizza fest chicago and it's city pizza fest fill in the blank right it's one of those no, it's, things well, it's where pizza it, right sorry pizza city fest pizza city so I was, and i do have it pizza, up here so that's okay so i was just in la this week researching pizza city fest socal but pizza mm -hmm. city fest chicago is going to happen july 23rd and 24th Okay, and that is kind of a, uh, a rotating location of different pizza festivals, basically. So, I think so. Like, right? I mean, I okay. I think we'll do three the first year and a half. I think the the third location we're still talking about, we're kind of maybe we'll do like a crowdsourcing. We're going to either do Southeast, base it in Nashville and pull from Atlanta, or do it Pacific Northwest and base it in either Seattle or Portland. Um, I just feel like the rest of the you know New York, 
sort of gobbles all the oxygen when it comes to pizza in this country, you know, rightly so <laughs> history, uh, you know, the, the, the sheer numbers, but you know, as you probably know, there's great pizza all over the country now. And there are people right. who moved from New York and the East coast and settled in Smyrna, Georgia, or, you know, Portland, Oregon, and they're making amazing pizzas. And I don't, I don't feel like the rest of the country gets the credit that it deserves. True. Um, so th I'm glad we're going to talk a little more about that because it's a little more in depth than I actually realized. So that's great. First, we want to tackle the main question here. What is Chicago style pizza? And people yep. ask your questions and comments live here. Steve will answer them if he has the knowledge or direct us where to get the answers we want. But you did touch on this when you say Chicago style pizza. It's not like New York style where there is kind of one quintessential style. Chicago style pizza is broken down into different categories. So Maybe I'll just let you go on that in, in a little more depth about what is Chicago yeah. style pizza. Yeah. So in the beginning of uh, my new book, The Ultimate Chicago Pizza Guide, I do break this into sort of a family tree, which I think is really important to talk about these different styles. So when someone says Chicago style pizza, it's really three styles, folks. So you have your, your first wave, which was tavern style, 1930s, 1940s, born in the taverns in the neighborhoods around the city. Um, oh, fantastic. There it is. Yep. Yeah, so I didn't have I didn't have the visual, but I'm going to sh show everything. There, but there you go. Right, baked in a pan and then the hearth baked. Right. So so we have a tavern style, which would be hearth baked, thin, crispy uh, sauce and cheese, edge to edge, cut into squares because you could fit those little squares onto a cocktail napkin and have a couple beers and then go home and have dinner with your family. But the second major style is deep dish that started in 1943, uh, it was called the pizzeria, then it was Ricardo's. And then it became Pizzeria Uno. And you'll see deep dish there in the middle. And then below deep dish, you've got you know, you cast iron, you've got stuffed, uh, you've got deep pan. You know, deep pan, unlike deep dish, deep dish, you typically press the dough up along the inner wall, like you'd find at Lou Malnati's or My Pie. Deep pan, you just let the dough proof in the pan, let it rise, put the slices of mozzarella around it to protect it from the sauce. And you've got a deep pan like at Pequod's or Burt's or Millie's or George's. So there's deep dish there's deep pan the third style is stuffed this is where most people confuse with deep so stuffed has a second layer of dough across the top so unlike deep dish which has your bottom dough slices of mozzarella topping and then sauce we're going to slices of cheese protect the bottom crust stuffed you've got your bottom crust your bottom dough shredded mozz topping and then a second layer of thinner dough across the top of the pan, and then your sauce going on top of that. That's why those pizzas look, you know, three, four inches taller. They're, they're as high as the pans they're baked in. And that's where yeah. a lot of people get this confused. I have a problem with it because the sauce is not cooking with the ingredients. There's a segregation there. I like the ingredients sort of marrying with the sauce. You're also having an issue with the top layer of dough, which is sitting between sauce and cheese. And so it gets to be kind of like a cooked noodle texture it's not firm and crisp like it like a bottom crust of a deep dish should be so stuff is like it's a lot it's like an i say it's an afghan for your stomach typically you see people in chicago in the summertime walking down michigan avenue with boxes of giordano's because there is no way they can eat a whole stuffed pizza unless they've got eight people each having one slice so those are the three and those are really the, the and the, by the way deep dish was 1943 stuffed was 1971 and really, even by the early 70s, we didn't have that many deep dish places. We got a handful of deep dish places. It's really become in the, in the 80s and 90s when we had all the tourism here, people coming to Chicago, and pizzerias were like, we got to do deep dish because everybody wants deep dish. You know, so you find yeah. tavern style places like Pat's, which I love, put a deep dish on their menu because when the Cubs are in town, all the St. Louis Cardinals fans come up here and they all want deep dish. And so Pat's is near the stadium. And so they got to make deep dish for those people, but it's not what they do well. Well, and, and you mentioned that, uh, I guess, technically four categories. I was thinking three, deep dish, stuffed, and pan. Or, I'm sorry, deep dish, stuffed, and tavern style. Now, you did say they're the deep pan and a deep dish. They are separate but similar. Um, but do you yeah, count them separate I, categories, technically? I, I think it deep is the category. I mean, but I really think stuffed is a separate kind of pizza because it got the second layer of dough. Right. The, right. the deep dish pizza, I mean, there's a deep pan. Like I say, it doesn't have that wall of crust pressed along the upper upper wall. And yeah, typically okay. that pizza is lower in the middle. You know, it's definitely like five eighths of an inch. It's not even that high. But just, a deep pan, you're just going to push the dough into the pan and let it proof and rise like a Sicilian would in a rectangle. 
Um, and then you're going to top it with slices of cheese and then et cetera yeah. and bake it. So uh, you're going to do like an overnight proof for sure. But I, I always, I, I don't like when people confuse deep and stuffed. I just saw Leo Spitzeri sent me a video of something he was doing with the guy who's calling Chicago pizza casserole. And I'm like, dude, if you've ever seen my pie or Lou Malnati's, those deep dishes are not casseroles. If it's done right, yeah, you don't want to overwhelm it. I, obviously, you know, they take the one extreme example and that becomes a stereotype in your head. Um, so I, I, I've i always felt that, yes, stuffing 100% completely different from your deep dish. I can see how your deep dish and deep pan, one category, separate arms of it. But, I mean, the, it sounds like the deep pan is more going to be your traditional pan. You know, it's going to be yeah. more in line with what everybody else does. But to, for that deep dish, you want that reservoir. But it's somebody's call even like the deep dish and stuff like the, the waiting I mean, pool it, of marinara or the, something like that the, the the above ground outdoor pool is a yeah. popular one uh the the boat anchor is another one and then i personally came up with um the game of thrones because like the castle wall right yeah i like that i like that. Um, keep it, everything look, keeps it in if you cut away a, a deep dish or deep pan excuse me a deep pan pizza and you put it next to a sicilian on the east coast they're not going to look that different. I mean, one's round, one's square, rectangular. But the height of a deep yeah. pan ain't all that different from like a Prince Street pizza or, you know, a Sicilian from from uh, Brooklyn. A big Sicilian. Yeah, and this <laughs> – yeah, right. And that's what I was kind of thinking is that, the, you know, we're getting ready to do a competition, which we'll talk about in here in a second as well. But it's – just because it's in a pan doesn't mean it's deep dish. I like this construction right here, just uh, – it's kind of a good cartoony cross section. It lets you know the basic of what a deep dish is, and this isn't a stuffed because it doesn't have that second layer of but, dough on the top. But see, all, that's the misleading because that sauce is all the way at the top where the top crust line is, and there's. Right. I mean, I could show you pictures of deep dish pizzas. The the crust should be higher than the middle. Yeah, and actually, that's one of the rules that I have in there as far as like the category rules. You have to hit this. The crust has to be higher than the toppings in the sauce. If that rises above points are taken off it's not chicago style that is right. you're right that is misleading it shows but, kind of the order but the order is thick and exaggerated so but that would that would be like a nancy's or a giordano's that looks like a stuffed pie yeah yeah it does it does so i i mean that's the trickiest part of it when everybody says chicago style i have to say what do you mean and we can't forget about tavern style <laughs> honestly i like it you know it's right that, it's easy it's quick it's it's filling i can have more of it than just one slice if i want to not only is it easy and quick, but it is everywhere. It is what Chicagoans eat their entire lives. Mm. Uh, there's a, a famous True. place here called the uh, uh, Italian Fiesta, where Michelle Obama used to go when she was a kid. It was like, for good grades, you get the Italian Fiesta pizza on the South Side. <laughs> and the owner is like third generation, and it, the whole neighborhood African-American, but the owners are third generation Italian. And I said, you know, how, when did you have, do you guys ever have deep dish down here? They're in South Shore. And she's like, I didn't have deep dish. I was like 20, 21 years old and grew up in Chicago. So wow. what does that say? That, that tells yeah. you that people all over Chicagoland, typically, unless you grew up in Lincolnwood on the North shore or the Northwest suburbs where Lou Malnati started in 71, you're typically going to be a tavern style eater in Chicago. Yeah. I, and that's kind of what I was thinking too. When you ask a lot of the Chicago people, the, thicker deep dish and stuff or i don't want to say touristy gimmicks but on the average night they're getting something more tavern style it's easy to share not as yeah. filling I don't, I don't want to say not as overwhelming i think is a better way to put it not as overwhelming Wait, and, and scary and, and i think lose is maybe the exception because there are 60 lose locations although some are in arizona some are in wisconsin but they're mostly in chicagoland they seem to be like the most popular deep dish style and they're fairly yeah. consistent and um, as long as you don't, you have to, there's one thing you have to know when you, it's a pro tip. You, when you order a sausage pie, and by the way, in Chicago, you only order sausage, pepperonis for amateurs. <laughs> um, no, no disrespect to the pepperoni family, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it's a sausage town. Um, but at Lou's, if you don't specify crumbled, they will press on a, like a sheet of, <laughs> of raw Italian sausage into like a hubcap. So that every bite has sausage in it. I think it's overwhelming. It's too much. It's overkill. It goes against my most in principal term is OBR, optimal bite ratio. And I think you need to have the crumbled sausage, you know, the pinched and pressed directly onto the pies to get just an even distribution. So you have to say crumbled when you order a deep dish. And never get, if you're getting it to go, never get it cut. Always get it uncut 
because as soon as you cut into a deep dish, you know, the sauce and cheese are going into the crevices. And the whole reason you're putting slices of mozzarella across the bottom dough is to protect it from the sauce. Yeah, it keeps that dough from getting super soggy. And when you cut it, you're like re-releasing the Red Sea almost right back into the box. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. Well, these are all great tips and uh, a lot of clarification on what the the categories are. It even sounds like there is more distinction in in the categories themselves if you want to dive down into it. I don't. Not right now. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. We've covered the big three, but I mean, you know, in my own time, in my spare time, I'll do the research, the diligence. But um, good. Uh, for sake for time's sake, I did want to kind of move on to the next subject, which is Pizza City Fest Chicago. And after kind of reading about it a little bit, I didn't realize you were one of the originators of this. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this, your involvement and what you guys are I, expand on what you're yeah, looking to do. I'm not one of the originators. I am the originator. Um, I reached out to the guys in New York and found out how they did it with some ovens talk to pizza master here in wheeling and um they're going to give us 10 pizza master ovens so we're all electric ovens we're going to have power generators i had seen other events in chicago where they make the pizzeria bring the cooked pizza to the event and i just thought that was awful and not fair to the pizza maker so we are going to do it the right way you're going to make pizzas on site uh 10 ovens so each oven is a different style so oven number one might be uh, deep dish and there'll be two deep dish players there and that's the only deep dish all day and number number, number two will be tavern and then there's going to be one for sicilian and roman and detroit and neapolitan and artisan and nice. so you'll see nine ten different styles of pizza in one day and then the next day on sunday 20 different pizza makers 39 of these 40 are from chicago um actually most are from the city proper one from Nashville, because I love St. Vito Focaccia, and Michael mm-hmm. Hanna is going to drive up and make his uh, amazing focaccia pizza uh, one of the days. And then the speakers and seminars. I feel like you know what I used to do well, not in my previous life as a food reporter when I was doing more stuff for Aspen Food and Wine Festival, I would always speak at these panels where we'd have kind mm-hmm. of thought leaders. And so I wanted to have the, the big industry leaders come and talk about dough and pizza and pizza making. So Dan Richer from Razza in Jersey City will be here. Chris Bianco, as you probably know from Pizzeria Bianco, will be here. Just went to his new place in Los Angeles this week, by the way, which opens next week, which is incredible. And then Tony nice. Gemignani, you've probably heard of him. And then Laura Meyer, who works with Tony at Capo's. So who? some heavy hitters. And then Francisco Magoya from Modernist Pizza and Stephanie Swan, uh, the publisher there. They're both going to be in moderating panels. So really the creme de la creme, yeah. the bechamel of the, you know, whatever. Uh, the soap Posada, <laughs> the, um, they're all going to be here uh, for two days. And then the other cool thing is we're having these pop-ups, like totally unrelated. Brian Sangler from A Piece of Shoals in Portland, Oregon, will be here doing a dinner collab with uh, Derek Tung at Pauly G's Logan Square Friday night. And then Dan Richard said, I'll come in a day early, make my dough. He'll do a dinner at Ala Vita on Saturday night. And Tony G is going to do a dinner with Robert, uh, Robert Garvey at Robert's Pizza on Sunday night. So these cool collaborations, we're going to have mobile pizza ovens around the city. Um, there's the map. So we are going to go to LA next. That's going to happen okay. in March, March of next year, right before pizza expo. Uh, we haven't, we haven't put in the information yet, but yeah, I think uh, LA will be next for sure. I was just there eating 24 pizzas this week and mm-hmm. we're starting to invite people now to get this thing going March 25th, 26th of uh, next year. But yeah, it's really going to be special, I think. And Chicago's never had something like this. We have taste of Chicago, which is I think kind of weak. Um, and again, I don't like when pizzerias show up with pre-made pizza. It just, it's not fair to the customer. It's not fair to the pizza maker. You know, we're not going to do a contest. We're not going to be judging anything. Um, it's really a celebration of the region's best pizzas. Well, yeah, that's actually, that's spectacular. I love how you have so many different, uh, uh, speakers, like you said, and then actually just some of those events that just kind of lined up, uh, the the pop-ups are going to be great. I'm, Looking to hopefully get up there and see my U.S. Pizza team member Derek Tong at Pauly G's. Uh, we were just there for the NRA show. Another great place. Yep. He was he having a be, party with he, Mike's Hot Honey. So, yeah, he he's done such a good job with his uh, Logan Squares, as he calls them, his Detroit style pieces. You know, I think that's a very popular style right now in Chicago. But he just does them so well. So when we have tours, we always stop there on our Saturday bus tour. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, you know, the, the cool thing about this is you're going to be able to, if you're a pro, you can learn from the pros. If you're an amateur, you can learn from amateurs. Uni's going to be there showing people how to make pizzas at home. Um, you know, we want to do it. We, we want to hit both sides of this, obviously. Um, and then, right. you know, pizza merch and pizza shirts and pizza 
um, uh, posters and all that kind of stuff too. Well, that's definitely great. If somebody wants to, um, I don't know, I guess exhibit or be a, if there's a pizzeria interested in having pizza there or people want to attend, where do they reach out? Um, just pizzacityfest.com. We've got a contact right on mm -hmm. Pizza City Fest. Um, all of our sponsorships are pretty much sold out at this point. But, um, and we, of course, we have all of our vendors already set. Uh, mm -hmm. that the lineup is all on the website. But yeah, they could reach out to us if they want to want to chat about something. Okay. Well, pizzacityfest.com yeah. and scrolling at the bottom, guys, I did put it in the comments as well. It should be clickable. Um, and it is set up for Chicago right now. And that is going to rotate from city to city. But it's always going to be pizzacityfest.com. Yep, pizzacityfest.com. And then you'll find the other cities there. Exactly. Awesome. That's that's way to that's the way to do it. Make it easy. One stop shop. Mm -hmm. So I did want to ask you then again about um, well, the National Pizza Show, August 23rd and 25th. Uh, what is your involvement in that? Because we are also having a competition there, the Chicago U.S. Pizza Cup, where we are going to have a competition for these three styles of Chicago pizza that we just talked about. So, so uh, what are you looking to get out of this? This is August 23rd and 25th. What are you looking to get out of this? Yeah, so, so we're going to do some tours for people. I think uh, we talked to the organizers. We're gonna, I think we're going to offer some tours uh, that will go into the city. And then we're going to, I'm going to be judging, I believe. Uh, I don't have a time commitment yet, but I know I'm going to be judging some stuff, which would be right up my alley, which would be great to see because um, I want to see what people are doing and you know how they treat the different Chicago pizzas. They're, they're not easy to do. I mean, doing it proper tavern style, the kids from, um, there's a place in Bridgeport on the south side, kind of near Sox Park, called Pizza Fried Chicken Ice Cream. I'm not <laughs> sure if you've heard of that, but it's a great place. Uh, and the pizza they do, they do Sicilian in the summertime and they do tavern style year round. And they've really kind of cracked the code on tavern style. Uh, it's, it's difficult to do. I mean, it's got very low moisture. You typically want to, like the old mm -hmm. school guys like Pat's, well, once they sheet it, They'll place it between sheets of paper for four days in the cooler uh, to pull the moisture out of those those uh, doughs, and they really want it dry and brittle. So you, you want almost like a saltine when you're done with it. You don't want chewy. There's not really a ton of crust on the outside. There's no crumb at all. Um, right. It's like a cracker thin, but it's really a unique pizza. It, you know, it's the party cut. It's meant to be having at a party with, you know, with a cocktail napkin. But uh, it'd be interesting to see at the festival at the uh, the, uh, the show what they're going to be doing with that, how they're going to be doing that. Sometimes a stone deck is too much and it pulls too much moisture out of the bottom and it you know, incinerates them. You've really got to watch the pizzas. Um, I've never seen anybody do a tavern style on a, sh on a screen, but that could, could happen as well. Well, yeah, and we are going to have a couple Pizza Master ovens there, um, a couple decks. So we are going to be setting it up, give people about 40 minutes for their deep dish and their stuffed but we'll have it staggered so pies are coming out every 10 minutes. And also we'll have the tavern style category as well. So, um, yes, I am the one who needs to be sending you the emails about judging, but we kind of got a soft, firm commitment, you know. But, yes, I would yeah. love all your expertise in judging these styles. And I might actually – I will probably consult you about the scorecards and rules, in fact. So, sure, sure. Happy to. Uh, couldn't think of anybody better. But, yeah, if everybody wants to go to the website, uspizzateam.com slash 22 CUSPC, you can register there. Uh, find out all the information um, and see, and also register to attend or exhibit at the National Pizza and Pasta Show at the Stevens Convention Center in Rosemont, Illinois by O'Hare Airport. So um, what are you looking? I know that you said as a judge or as a pizza guy, you're really interested in seeing what people are doing right now with Chicago style pizza. Uh, are you looking forward to maybe tasting um, some Ch Chicago style pizza from people who are not from Chicago? Maybe see what people kind of interpret chicago style pizza as yes and no um and i'm, I'm <laughs> to be honest well i'm always curious to see what other people are doing like i was just in amsterdam in fact my podcast that just dropped today is a show from amsterdam at a place called the ugly duck it's a guy from chicago who grew up on Luz, missed it uh moved there and found a chef from italy brought him back to chicago to taste a bunch of chicago deep dish and then now they're reinterpreting this pizza there um, it's not like Lou Malnati's at all. Um, you know, they're using provolone. They can't find uh, sort of the right kind of mozzarella. Uh, they put a little shredded mozzarella on it. The, the dough, I think, is a little bit too high in the sides, but they do brush uh, the pan with butter and they give it that sort of the buttery richness on the outside. So it's interesting to see how they're kind of hacking it. But, um, you know, I, if I want Chicago pizza, I want to eat it in Chicago. I, 
I think an outsider coming in and saying, this is what I think of Chicago pizza. It's like, I don't know. But if it's delicious pizza, who cares? I mean, it doesn't have to, just because it doesn't mm. adhere to the rules, I'm fine with it. That's why I want to try it and see it. But typically people don't spend enough time here. They don't really understand the ratio. They think you've got to add a bunch of shredded cheese, which is typically stuffed. They think you've got to have, you know, really thick slices, which you don't. They think the dough should be really high on the outside. It shouldn't necessarily. I mean, at my pie, it only comes up about halfway in the pan, the dough on the outside, and then the middle of the pie is even shorter. So you don't need to have it two and a half inches high on the outside. So I'm, I'm always curious to see what they're doing. But again, they're not, are they basing it on a 50 year old recipe? I don't know. I mean, the only 50 year old deep dishes in town are my pie and Lou Malnati's. Well, and I, like you said, doesn't always have to go to the top. I did that in my experimentations here. And then I realized I was killing the pie by trying to fill the pan. Just cut the dough yeah. down a little bit. I mean, I'm like, no. it was so simple. And, I'm like, geez, that's just silly. And, and, and by the way, I'm purposely not mentioning Uno's and Douay's. They are the originals from 1943 and 1955, respectively. But they were sold to a Boston company 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago. They've been the Boston company yeah. ever since. They don't really have any much to do with Chicago, um, which is kind of sad, I think, because it's something that was created here, but taken to Boston. And so um, I've been to check out the pizzas you know, since, obviously, for the book research. And I just find they take shortcuts, and it's just not the same as, as a, a lose or a my pie. Yeah, well... <clears throat> Hopefully, some of these people are going to come in and understand what Chicago style is. Um, now, you have you judged before? Have you seen what others' interpretation of Chicago style is? It, are people getting anywhere close? I, I have not. Believe it or not, I've not been asked to judge much pizza. Um, I'm maybe okay. that will change after this. I'm hoping. Well, you're you're in my judges book now, so be okay. prepared to be harassed, Daniel Perea. Uh, old uh, cohort over here says Gino's East FTW. I assume that means something bad. <laughs> no, for the win. I, for the oh, I was thinking fuck the walk, but that's just because I'm uh, for the I'm win. A child Gino's at heart. Yeah, started in 1966. For the win, yes. Started in 1966 in Chicago by a couple of cab drivers. Uh, Fred Bartoli was one of them. His grandson Brian has a place in Chicago called Bartoli's in honor of his mm. grandfather. Um, but that's, I'd, I'd love to know more about that story because my understanding, I've talked to some historians here. So Gino's East was started, like I said, mid sixties, they poached, uh, one of the cooks from Dewey's, her name was Alice May Redmond and hmm. she was from Mississippi and she could not get the dough to pan out quick enough, I guess, to, to meet demand. So she thought of a biscuit short dough recipe from Mississippi from her childhood, which had fat in it. And so she starts adding more oil to the dough. And you'll see people, pizzas that were created in the late 60s, early 70s, like if you go to Lou's, they're quite oily and quite rich. That's why there's this richness. It's not necessarily corn oil. It's all it could be olive oil. Um, but so Gino's is one of the first to start doing this because of Alice May Redmond. And then you nice. see in the late 60s, early 70s, pies get to be a little bit heavier, a little bit richer, a little bit thicker and higher as the, versus what they were in the 40s and 50s at Uno's and Douay's, which were quite thin. I mean, you could hold them up with a hand, no problem. I wonder if that's what they taught uh, Daniel in their in their training manual at Gino Z's. Who knows? He's he was uh he used to be the camera guy here, so he's been to quite a lot of the, of the adventures with me. So, um, but he is a very knowledgeable gentleman, and he will do all this research on his own time too. So, thank you for oh, chiming so in, just, Daniel. Oh, he's just saying he likes Gino Z's. That's all. I'm pretty sure that's what he's saying. Okay, and like I, I said, if, if you, no, 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 no. Dan, he's a, a former PMQ. But so he's he's I, I trust okay. his opinion on pizza. So that is a good one, Daniel. We also have uh, Mohammed. Mohammed, okay. Uh, we opened a deep dish style pizza restaurant there in Ottawa, Ontario, last December, and we couldn't be happier with the demand. My hope is one day to open a Canadian beaver tail in Chicago. That sounds like fun. What's a beaver tail? I don't know, but is it just sounds like fun. <laughs> I, oh, I guess the, I don't know. The, well, that'd be kind of cool. I'd love to see that. Not Canadian, with Canadian so, yeah. bacon, though, please. No Canadian bacon on the pizza. I will find out what the difference is besides the fact that it comes from Canada. I guess. <laughs> well, oh, I true. guess. Like, okay, okay. Maybe beaver tail looks like a dish. Uh, it looks like some kind of pastry. Mm. Like an elephant ear of sorts. Oh, Canada's wow. most famous donut. Okay. Ah, well, there we go. All right. Maybe... 
do a beaver tail dessert pizza. There you go. All right, Mohammed. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you can get down here to Chicago or Orlando, we'll have another competition in Orlando in November or be to the uh, Pizza City Fest Chicago, July 23rd. So honestly, that's really about it. Um, Tell us a little bit about your book. I know a lot of this information is coming from the book, but we didn't really mention yeah. it that much. Um, it's a great resource. Uh, a lot of my friends and US Pizza Team members are actually in that, and uh, they really need to tell me when they get in books like that because it was a surprise for me to find out, which was always fun too. But uh, tell us a little bit about why you decided to do this, because this is your second one, right? After yeah, Pizza yeah. City USA? The first book just was getting outdated. Um, I didn't get a lot of places in because of the publication deadline. And then, of course, we had the pandemic. And then I saw all these places opening. I mean, one famous pivot, just one of many stories, and it's in the book, is Noah Sandoval, who's a Michelin starred chef at Oriole here in Chicago. And they couldn't open their cafe. His business partner had a cafe next to a music club that was tiny. And they said, let's do a pizza place. And he liked Prince Street pizza. He liked that sort of Sicilian style. He reached out to me, sent me some pictures. I said, you're way off. I'm going to connect you to John Arena in Las Vegas because he's the master. <laughs> and then yeah. they, they connected. And John has helped him develop this incredible Sicilian that we have now at Pizza Friendly Pizza in Chicago. And so it's one of the places that, that opened. And I was like, I've got to include that. I got, I've got to have recipes this time around because I didn't have them in the first book. Um, I wanted to do that sort of pizza family tree that you referenced earlier. I wanted to tell the stories of little places like the Pizza Puff. You heard of the Pizza Puff? Do you get a Pizza Puff where you live? They're in 44 states. No, I have not okay. heard of that. So this is a great story too. So I mean, I want to tell you, so Pizza Puff um, here in Westtown started by, um, I think they're Syrian, Syrian Christian immigrants from um, the 1920s were here working at the Illinois Tamale Company. Il Taco is the name of the company. And in the 70s, when all these deep dish places were opening, the hot dog joints were getting killed. And they asked their tamale supplier, could you come up with something pizza related? Because we cannot compete with all these new deep dish pizza places. And they came up with a pizza puff, which is basically a tortilla filled with pizza ingredients, deep fried, because everybody's got a deep fryer in the hot dog joints, and then <laughs> it puffs up. And the Pizza Puff was born in like uh, 74, I believe. And they're in 44 states. Uh, they're a very big Chicago thing. Every hot dog joint in Chicago, you can get a Pizza Puff for a couple of bucks. So I want to tell these kinds of stories in the new book. And then there's a whole gluten-free section. Um, there's a pairing beer with uh, pizza. I talked to the beer columnist from the Chicago Tribune. He wrote a little chapter for me. So it's much more comprehensive. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's just so much in there. And like I said, uh, yeah. some of my guys got in there. I, I could show all this, but you know, guys, go buy it. It's on Amazon. Buy the damn book. Yeah. My my arm hurts already. You think I got this for free? He charged me extra. I thought we were friends, Steve. You used to be cool. <laughs> yeah, I got to pay my but, rent, baby. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. You aren't charging me for this, so I'll, I'll let that slide. But man, what I really do like, though, and we did have a question. I see... Um, sensational cinema i like that name that's really cute or cool or whatever cinnabon cinnamons maybe i don't know is deep dish square cut pizza considered a detroit style now this is like the one rule that i'm having the main rule in my chicago competition is no detroit style it's right in the name guys right. so can a deep dish or stuffed pie first off be square no no and it, it, if it's cut squared then is it technically detroit no, I mean, you would cut it. Detroit's got to be cut from a, a square or rectangular pan. You need to have yeah. the, the edges and the corners. You're never going to cut a stuffed into squares. It'll totally fall apart. You won't cut a deep dish into squares. It's just, it's too thick. Um, even it's if round. You're doing a large, if you're doing a, it's a round pie. But here's the funny thing I tell people on our tours a deep, uh, sorry, a Detroit is technically a deep dish pan. I mean, you never see them done in shallow Sicilian pans, they're always done in high sided, those Lloyd. Mm -hmm. 10 by 14 pans, it's, it is in a deep dish. It's just a square yeah. or rectangle. It's got corners versus the round deep dish, which does not. True. Well, Let's I mean, I guess that. one of the, yeah, one of the caveats for Chicago style has to be round. Um, Detroit style has to have the caramelization. I mean, there are several things on Detroit style that make it Detroit style as well. I don't think there is a Venn diagram necessarily where they, where they meet in the middle, except for the fact, like you said, it's technically a deep dish pan. Well, this is one interesting thing. So you got to remember, so Burt's and Pequod's were the most famous deep pan pizzas in Chicago that had the caramelized, the Frico. 
first time we ever had it was in the early 70s because that's when Pequod started. Now, I have no proof of this and Bert had passed away, but who's to say or not to say that Bert didn't see Buddies or Louis yeah. or um, who else is there? Shields in Detroit and then decide to do that sort of caramelization on his round deep pans in Chicago in the early 70s. There is no proof of that, but certainly Detroit started the Frico and that tradition. But then you all of a sudden you saw in the early 70s in Chicago, Burt's and Pequod start this. And now in Chicago, you've got Millie's and George's and they're all doing that deep pan with the caramelized Frico around the edge. Well, and I mean, technically, if you wanted to go, I mean, you could do a Sicilian, the rectangular square cuts and they're in a pan, but that's yeah. still not Detroit. So Right, right, right. It's it's weird. I mean, when people, a lot of laymen's, I should say, uh, regular folk, they're like, they're, it's just pizza. And they just don't know I, why why I mean, I'm bald. <laughs> I mean, a Detroit is a, was created by Sicilian cooks in the kitchen at, at Buddy's, and so it's just like stuffed is sort of the offspring of deep. Detroit yeah. is the yeah. offspring of Sicilian. True. Yeah, and it's all just mm -hmm. evolution. You can yeah, you can find it all the way back from that one grain and that one tomato and just plant that whole family tree right there so yeah yeah well what is maybe your your favorite book and again guys um i just lost all my banners there we go but it is the ultimate chicago pizza guide history of squares and slices in the windy city by steve delinsky james beard james beard award-winning food journalist author both how does that work yeah um i've won uh 13 beard awards for my tv radio and podcast work not for my pizza book writing but that's that could be next well, and I was going to, when in an email, say multiple decades of reporting, and then I was looking at it, and I didn't know, I didn't have all the numbers, so I couldn't, I didn't want to insult you either, <laughs> so. No, it's okay. It's okay. But I, over, I, I, I proudly hang the Beard Awards in my office, so there's all the James Beard Awards. Wow, that's just there's a lot. <laughs> there's a few up there, yeah, but mostly for TV, uh, radio, and podcast. But again this is what you do and this is why i'm asking you about chicago style pizza because everybody's been talking to me about you since i started here so i'm oh. glad we finally got to have a chat Thank um, you. you made it into my judges book so anytime there's an event regardless of where it's at i'll see if you want to judge and uh right. you know past that what is uh, one final thought that you maybe have or you want people to know about um final thoughts about chicago style pizza uh, just once, you know, once again, I'll reiterate, Chicago style is three styles. And I think when you're judging a pizza, you really need to think about the OBR, the optimal bite ratio. What is it that makes a great pizza? It's balance. You want crust cheese sauce topping in every bite. I think that's important to think about when you're looking at a pizza. And like anything, when you're, when you're looking at a pizza, assessing a pizza, it's all about the crust. Everything is based on the crust. It is the basis for every bite. Um, I think I put the most weight in the crust of the pizza because that's really um it, it's, it's what carries everything home i mean anybody can order great cheese and order great sauce and great toppings but you can't just order up great dough true yeah and it's i mean it's that foundation that building block that we all need so um if people if you guys want to get more information about steve and what he's doing you can go to i guess it's just steve delinsky.com which is nice and easy yeah and you'll have links for the book as well He's also on Facebook with this covers a lot of the food, pretty much everything you're doing. This isn't just the pizza centric. So um, I'll put it this way. He is highly Googleable. I, I can never say that word. <laughs> Look him up. But I've never the, heard that. Thank you. I'm highly Googleable. I like that. Okay. All right. I'll take you can that. put that. That's you, you can have that one, Steve. So um, I did want to thank you again for all your time and all the information. I will be seeing you soon. Hopefully, if not uh, in August, in June uh, at the earliest, or I'm sorry, July, at the end of July, July at the, the Pizza, Pizza yeah, City Fest, Chicago. Yeah. So anybody wanting to re uh, reach out or find out more about Steve, stevedelinsky.com. Go to pizzacityfest.com for more information about that. uspizzateam.com to find out about the 2022 Chicago Pizza Cup. And uh, past that, everybody be kind to each other. Pizza to the people. Yep. See you guys next time. Thank you, Steve.